Shevchenko, you have to really take into consideration. She's been doing it for a long time. We're pretty much talking about a four to five year span of just dominance, right? The question is, is she going to fall into all of the other categories of champions who lose their belt and just can never quite get it back? Or look at Israel Adesanya, who loses it, gets it back, and then loses it again, right? We need consistency. I don't think that we've had a more dominant champion in the sport, aside from John Jones, than Valentina Shevchenko. With all of that being said, AJ, there's a lot to like about Alexa Grosso heading into this matchup, man. What do you like about Grosso um, up against the champion, Valentina? I like Grosso, Derek, for her her style of fighting. You know, she's going to bring in the pressure. She's going to have knuckle up, but she's also going to have that confidence knowing that she was able to submit Valentina Shevchenko in their last fight. Face crack, and nonetheless, it was still a hell of a submission that she put herself in into that situation to get the outcome. That's where I like Grosso. She finds herself in the not comfortable positions, but in the most comfortable position she can in order to win the fight. That's what I like most about Alexa Grosso, as well as her composure, Derek. Nonetheless, the X's and the Y's, all that stuff. Yes, she's a, she's a very technical fighter, beautiful fighter, very composed in there. And that's why I like her the most, Derek. Do you see any other X factors going into this fight that she can exploit over Shevchenko? Yeah, man. And I think it's honestly, you have to consider something's probably in the back of Shevchenko's head, which is saying that fight that you beat me in, that was a fluke. And I think it's always tough for a champion because sometimes you need to simply admit defeat. Like, I was not the better person on that night. They got me. I'm going to train harder. I'm going to come back. Instead, Valentina, and I think it's almost given based on the dominance she's had, I think she really thinks in her head like that I would have won that fight. She was winning the fight. She was, right? But I do think that there were some intangibles around Alexa Grosso that made it... It was closer than we thought. And I think that had it gone all five rounds, it would have come down to a close decision. Now, the question ultimately becomes this. Grosso was getting out grappled in that fight. Turned it around with that beautiful back take to exploit the spinning back kick, the coveted, patented spinning back kick of Shevchenko. Shevchenko, is she spinning in this fight? No. No, I don't think so, Derek. I, if, if, Like you said, she was winning the fight until she starts pulling out the spinning shit. And that's where I think she's going to learn and, and show that veteranship that she has in order to not fall into those same kind of traps. I mean, and but then again, the abs being said, you know, when the adrenaline's pumping, we go back to what we know the most. And Shevchenko has been doing it for so long. It's going to be hard to kind of break those skills. So do I expect her to shoot or do I expect her to spin? Excuse me. No. But uh, will it happen? Probably. I mean, what do you think? I, and how many times out of a 10 do you see in this fight we're going to be seeing uh, Shevchenko throw in kind of that wild, unorthodox striking? Because she's a beautiful striker, has the techniques to get it done, and has landed them in the past. Do you see uh, history repeat itself in this one? Well, I think that her spinning stuff, man, is not untechnical. I think it actually lends to the technical nature of her striking, and I do think that she goes back to it. The reason why is because if you stop fighting the way that got you to the dance in the first place, that's when you lose, for real, when you change your entire game plan. I do think that this is going to be a heavy grappling affair from Shevchenko, and I think that if you're going to be looking to get into a dominant position, I think she's going to kind of go the Jessica Andrade approach and try to just get her down, crucifix, and get a finish. I think that... That's going to be the most likely path to victory for Shevchenko, given that if you look at who you would assume is the decision machine between the two, you would probably think Shevchenko, but it's actually Grasso. Grasso has actually, um, yeah, she's only finished two of her last like eight or so victories, right? A lot of them have become in, uh, decision victories, right? So I just think that ground game is going to come into play. On the feet, Grosso is sharper, man. She's faster. Her boxing is more crisp. And I think that she's going to be able to touch Shevchenko. She countered her really nice in that first fight. I just, it's going to be tough to say ultimately because Grosso is going to come in with a defined confidence. She has Mexico behind her, right? She has Diego Lopez in her in her corner, right? The UFC newcomer beast jujitsu guy, right? And Shevchenko, man, is going to be that relic of the past who's going to try to stay relevant. I love me some Shevchenko, but I do understand that the fight game moves on. What is, the, If any major concern for Shevchenko in this matchup, what is it for you? Father time, Derek, father time. That's kind of the biggest thing that we've seen a lot of the other champions fall into. You know, they they stay where they are while the rest of the competition catches up to them. And arguably, that could be what's kind of going on right now. Even with uh, Shevchenko's last fight before the Grasso won, the Tyler Santos fight, a lot of people were arguing, oh, she's losing her step. She's getting slower. She's doing all this. And I agree with you. Uh, Grasso does have a little bit sharper of skills. The speed is there. Can Shevchenko work on her veteranship, exploit the strength she has to use, and actually get this fight to the ground? I do think that's the best outcome for her. But what worries me the most is that little 
not lack of step, because I don't want to say she's lost a step at all, but having the rest of the field catch up to her, that's what worries me a little bit right there. And you're no longer a crust above everybody else. Now you're fighting with the big dogs, and Alexa Grosso is coming to show up on Saturday night. Let's talk props. Um, listen, I'm a little surprised here, man. Grosso for a submission plus 350 for a TKO plus 1200, decision plus 350. Props aren't super valuable for Grosso. Is this a matchup here, though, that you're looking at the odds and you look at, okay, on one hand, Shevchenko, statistically, I don't think that she's been anything lower than like a minus 300 favorite, bro, since like, um, I think since she fought Joanna Yanjacek, legitimately. I think it's been that long. It's been years, right? So getting her at minus 160 is almost a steal, you know what I mean? However, you have Alexa Grosso where it's like plus 135 for the champion who looked really good in the fight and had a lot of intangibles going into it that lends to confidence. The plus 350 for both submission and decision, this fight can end in a multitude of ways. So I see a lot of value going into that plus 135 money line. Do you see it the same way, Derek? Are you hedging the bet if you're a, if you're a Shevchenko better? Yeah, this is a matchup where I think that you go heavy on Shevchenko, but you throw a little something on the back end for Alexa Grosso because, like I said, you're thinking about history. You're thinking about trajectory, and I think with that being said, even though we feel confident here, I feel very confident at least that Shevchenko gets the job done either by finish or by decision. Um, there's something in the air, man, and you cannot discount that, man. So you definitely want to be able to not drop, not drop anything too crazy, but I think $10 on Alexa Grosso at minimum. You know, just kind of drop a little something, something. Anything else on this one, AJ? Man, the only thing I got over here is I'm going with Shevchenko for this one, and I actually like that plus 350 finish mm -hmm. just because I think she needs to solidify it to actually make it worth it. I do think if this goes to decision, this might be headed towards a Grosso victory. I could definitely see a split yeah, going into this being something weird. We'll see. All right, folks, that is your main event. Hopefully, we see and new. I don't know. We shouldn't say that, right? We should be objective. All right.